My name's Nick Josefowitz, and I live in Pacific Heights with my wife and my twin boys, Ben and Alec. And last week was their first week of preschool. It was a really exciting time for my family. We're so grateful to be raising our kids in this incredible community. But like so many of you, we're also so frustrated that city government has done such a bad job dealing with street homelessness and property crime, how expensive it is to live here, and how difficult it is to get around. We're one of the wealthiest, most talented, most compassionate cities in the country. We just have to do better. And that's why I'm running for supervisor and hope that you'll join the San Francisco Chronicle in picking Nick this November. My background is I started a company that built solar energy power plants. I'm a clean energy entrepreneur. I'd actually be the only supervisor with any business experience if I got elected. And what that taught me is that you have to be data-driven and outcomes-focused. You have to adopt modern technology into your organization to be more effective. And you have to look all around the country for the best practices that other cities have adopted to deal with the challenges that we're facing so much more successfully. And that's the approach that I bring as supervisor. And that's the approach that I've brought over the past three years as I've worked in the public sector. I sit on the board of a number of regional transportation agencies, including the ferries and BART. And bringing that data-driven approach at BART, for instance, we've managed to halve the number of calls and complaints at the Civic Center station. We've managed to be more data-driven about our maintenance practices, so our trains now break down eight times less often than they did over a decade ago. And we're now on track to build 30,000 new homes around BART stations all over the region, homes that are affordable to working families and affordable to seniors in exactly the right place to build those new homes in the Bay Area. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about street homelessness, because that's the issue that I hear most often when I'm out talking to voters, when knocking on their doors, and if you live in the district, you probably had me or one of uh, my campaign team knock on your doors. Um, and that's what I hear most often at house parties. We've had over 85 house parties at this point in the district. And I hear it from people who are just sort of bowled over by the inhumanity of letting so many thousands of people sleep on our streets when we're such a wealthy city. I hear it from people who feel that there's a real impact to our quality of life um, of the unchecked street homelessness when it comes to the feces on our street or the trash or people who are struggling with mental illness and we're not giving them the care that they need. And too often, that means that they end up becoming violent and aggressive. And I hear it from parents like me who take their kids out for a walk and pass by people on the street who are suffering and do nothing and just don't know what example that that shows to their children. I'm a pretty data-driven guy, so I also wanna make sure that we've got a grounding in the statistics. There are about 7,000 people who are homeless on any given night in San Francisco. That's a huge number, but it's actually not out of whack compared to other big, expensive cities in the United States. What is completely out of whack is the 4,350 people who are homeless and sleep on our streets every night. We have the highest rate of street homelessness of any city in the country, 11 times higher than New York, 20 times higher than Boston. Why? Because of bad decisions made at City Hall. Over the last 15 years, City Hall has shut down shelter beds, and it shut down mental health treatment beds. So we have fewer shelter beds and fewer mental health treatment beds today than we did in 2004. As supervisor, I would work to reverse those policies and do what other cities like Boston and New York have done so successfully, which is build 3,000 new shelter beds and 300 new mental health treatment beds for those who a shelter doesn't work for. We have a thousand person wait list today for our shelter beds. It takes almost three months after you've fallen into homelessness to get off the streets into a shelter bed. That's not okay, that's not humane, that's not compassionate, that doesn't work for our communities, and that's what I'd work to fix as supervisor. And that's why I hope that if you really wanna to get to grips with street homelessness, you pick Nick this November, and we work together on this data-driven plan to get to grips with this epidemic.